Hey everybody, thank you for clicking on my video. Today I am doing something a little different than what I normally do. I normally just cover missing person cases that need a lot of attention because they haven't gotten it. But today I'm doing something that I've wanted to do for a while. I have compiled a list of the top 10 most dangerous toys that really should never have been given to children. This is my list, not everyone will agree, but that's okay because it's my channel and I can post what I want. So here it goes. Starting off at number 10, clackers. And they're clackers. A new toy for the trendy technological age. There wasn't much to these. They were just two big acrylic balls attached to string and kids could fling them around and, you know, the balls would clack together and make noise. But you could do tricks with them. But the clacker balls not only resulted in pinched fingers and wax to the head, they would also hit together so hard that the plastic acrylic would shatter and and jagged bits of shrapnel flying into eyes and skin. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, who was in charge of regulating toys at the time, stepped in in 1971 to require strict safety standards for newer versions of clackers. Clackers are still out there, but they're safer versions now. You know, the plastic boring kind. At number nine, we have moon shoes. The original version really requires no explanation on why these things were extremely dangerous. Metal springs and sharp edges exposed while strapped to the feet of bouncing children. What could possibly go wrong? Not to mention one wrong bounce could result in broken ankles and your face slammed into the ground. In 1992, Nickelodeon came out with their own version of moon shoes, advertising them as mini trampolines for your feet. They were made of high density plastic and had adjustable velcro straps and non-slip soles. Despite the pictures and the advertisements, they didn't really allow you to jump any higher than normal. They were more supposed to make you feel like you were walking on the moon. Of course, children did still try to jump in them, resulting in lots of skin, knees, and elbows, and probably some faces. And I don't know if you can still get them in stores, but they're still on eBay. So are the old metal ones if you're feeling extra risky. Number eight, Sky Dancers. These were adorable little fairy dolls with propeller-like arms that spun into the air when you pulled the little string on their base. You couldn't control the direction they would fly though and these little spinning princess fairies went wherever they wanted and they were a little too powerful. The fun was short-lived because a lot of kids got hurt. Some of the injuries reported were scratched eyeballs, cuts to the face, chipped teeth, broken ribs, and even concussions. How do you get a concussion from a spinning doll? With so many injuries reported, the Consumer Product Safety Commission banned the toy in 2000. I think you can still get newer, safer versions that are much less like a weed eater being lifted into the air. Number seven, kite tubes. Kite tubes were all the rage in 2006. They were like a raft that would be pulled by a boat, only they went airborne like a kite. The kite tubes could reach speeds in excess of 25 miles per hour, and once they were in the air, people couldn't control them. They were flying off these things like crazy and hitting the water from heights of up to 30 feet. And if you hit water from such a high height, it's like hitting a brick wall. Injuries included being knocked unconscious, broken vertebrae, busted eardrums, and punctured lungs. That sounds like so much fun. It didn't take long for kite tubes to become illegal to use in many places in the United States and Canada. And after three people died in four months time, the kite tubes were finally recalled. If you wanna see these kite tubes in action, I have placed the link to a video of kite tube fails in the description box if you wanna check it out. Number six, Monster Science Colossal Water Balls. These were marble-sized, water-absorbing polymer balls that when soaked in water would grow up to 400 times their original size. Pretty cool until kids who thought they looked like delicious candy decided to swallow them, which caused not only choking, but when ingested, they would still swell up inside the body, causing intestinal obstructions that could not be seen by x-rays and could only be removed by surgery. You can still get these. They are in a lot of gardening and craft sections, so please, if you get these, keep them away from children. Number five, the Atomic Energy Laboratory Kit. It contained a cloud chamber, 
a spintheroscope, which is a device for watching Adam's decay, an electroscope, a Giger counter, as well as a 60-page instruction book and a guide to mining uranium. It also contained three sources of radiation and four uranium ores that were also radioactive. And if you ran out of your radioactive sources, there were no worries because the manual included a coupon where you could send off for more radioactive material and have it delivered straight to your home. But in the 1950s, there were very few laws for consumer protection and there weren't a whole lot of regulations for toy safety. Due to this, the toy was never recalled. However, it was discontinued because of poor sales. You obviously can't get these anymore, but there are a few left on display in museums. Number four, the CSI fingerprint kit. The CSI fingerprint examination kit allowed kids to dust for fingerprints because it came with a little thing of fingerprint dust. Kids were super excited to play detectives. They were putting this dust on everything. But much to the horror of parents, this fingerprint dust turned out to be extremely toxic. It was tested and found to contain two types of asbestos with 7% of the powder being tremolite asbestos. Tremolite is the worst kind of asbestos. It can cause lung cancer and mesothelioma after only being exposed to it once. The kits were recalled and I'm sure there were several lawsuits. Number three, lawn darts. Need I say more? These were large darts that were thrown and you were supposed to get them to land inside a hoop on the ground. They had a sharp metal spike on the end so they would stick in the ground when thrown, but they were also sharp enough to pierce someone's skull, obviously resulting in serious injury, and so they were banned in 1988. They also recommended that existing sets be destroyed. You can still buy a version of lawn darts, but they have the rounded end now instead of the deadly spike. Number two, aqua dots. This one's real bad, guys. These were little beads that you would put together to make a picture or design and then you would spray them with water and they would stick together. The kits came with a drying fan, an applicator pen, some little design templates, and a spray bottle to spray the beads. But the beads were coated with a chemical that turned into GHB when it got wet. If you do not know what GHB is, it's the date rape drug. Nothing like sitting down to do some crafts with the kids and getting roofied. 4.2 million of these sets were recalled. If you have any aqua dots in your house, please pause this video right now and go throw them away, throw them in the trash. Our winner at number one is the Snack Time Cabbage Patch Doll. The Snack Time Cabbage Patch Doll was marketed as a doll who loves to snack and really chews. This doll was the must have toy for Christmas in 1996. Little girls absolutely loved this doll. When you put the plastic food, like little fries and carrots, in the doll's mouth, she would eat them and then the food would magically reappear in her little backpack she was wearing. While the doll was eating, its little mouth would move up and down like it was chewing. It was pretty cool, right? No, it wasn't cool. While developing this doll, the manufacturers didn't add an on and off switch. They also didn't add any kind of safety mechanism that would stop the doll from chewing when something other than plastic fries and carrots were inserted in her mouth. The doll would chew anything that went into its mouth, including the fingers and hair of unsuspecting little girls. Some little girls had to actually chop their hair off because the doll wouldn't release them, while other little girls had their hair ripped right out of the scalp. It would take whatever you put in its mouth and not let go. I'm already kind of freaked out by dolls like certain ones just like really creep me out so I can't imagine how traumatized I would be as a child if my doll tried to eat my hair those little girls probably never got over it the toy company Mattel offered a $40 refund to anyone who voluntarily wanted to return the doll let me know if you agree with my list or comment below the toys that you think are the most dangerous also, let me know what toys scared you as a child. I've been thinking of doing a top 10 list of the creepiest toys. I know there were quite a few that I didn't like when I was little, but I'm kind of a scaredy cat. Things creep me out very easily. Thank you all so much for watching. I know this was a completely different thing than I normally do, but let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you want me to do more top 10 videos. Give this video a like, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Bye.